Today I'm going to show you just a quick tutorial about how to manipulate and use cameras for best effect in Blender. So to start off with, we're mostly just going to spend some time with our uh, default cube scene here and we're going to kind of mash things up from there. If you want to know what keys I'm using on the keyboard or uh, what my mouse is doing, watch this area down here in the bottom right corner and I'll try to kind of keep that going. To start off with, I'm going to change my render, en render engine over to Cycles. Uh, Cycles is the more accurate render engine. I'm going to use my GPU to render so it will be a little bit faster for us. And uh, we've basically got a camera, a cube, and a light source. So if we were just to look through our camera and look at a rendered view, this is essentially what we see here. So just to kind of add a little bit of depth and personality to this scene, I'm going to put a plane underneath my cube. GZ minus 1, I'll put it right to the bottom and then I'll scale that up by a factor of 10 and that gives us a little bit more of a sense of place. Okay, so a camera, um, in real life, uh, if we adjust, for instance, the aperture, on our camera we have to worry about how that affects exposure. That's one of the things that we don't really have to worry about in Blender. Um, I'm going to turn my light up here really quick just so we get a little bit of a better visual. Select the light, go to the power level, it's set to a thousand watts, so let's set that to five thousand watts. And let's give our cube just a little bit of color as well to kind of differentiate it from the background. Okay, so you can kind of see what's going on here. Let's select the camera and um, in our camera controls we have a lot of different options, um, most of which we can actually animate. So for instance our default focal length in this scene is 50 millimeters. Um, if I remember correctly, I think Blender's default is 35, and I think I changed this one. I think I changed my default to, th to be 50, which is a little more of a natural look and less, less distortion. But if I just drag this to the left, then you can see I can get a really wide angle lens or drag it to the right, and I can get kind of a telephoto effect where my background compresses. And that's kind of, uh, like I say, you can animate that. Just hold your mouse over it and tap I to set to keyframe the value of this on your timeline and then you can zoom in. So let's try that really quick. I'm on frame one and if I hold my mouse over this and tap I, you can see it turns yellow, it's keyframed and let's go forward to frame 100 now and let's zoom in on this um, cube. So maybe 135 millimeters and then tap I again. Actually, let's let's make it more dramatic. Let's go to 200. So now tap I. Okay, and if I play back my animation, you can see that it zooms in. Let's go to our material preview for this. Just zooms in like that, which is nice. Okay, camera position. Um, if we look at about how big this uh, this cube is in our camera's view there and I select the camera then I can I'm gonna keyframe the camera's position so tap I and click I I usually do a loc rote on camera I found that when I uh, when I keyframe just location or just rotation I always end up wishing I'd keyframed them both so I'm gonna keyframe that with the loc rote then I'm gonna kinda of try to match this centered sort of 50% height uh, at frame 100. So you can see our. Let's see, actually, there's a better way to do this. If I want to drag this thing straight back, I can tap G, Z, Z, and that allows me to zoom, come back in its local axis. So I'm going to say that's about right. Okay, so now let's keyframe that loc rote and let's see what our animation looks like here. This is what's called a dolly zoom where we're uh, changing the focal length of the camera and therefore the level of distortion in our view 
but we're not changing or at least not dramatically changing the size of our main subject because we're also moving the camera at the same time so let's rewind you might recognize that effect from like Lord of the Rings there's a scene where they do that and we can do it the other way too move the camera forward while zooming out okay so that's kind of fun we can play with focal length we can play with uh, with the position um, so I'm gonna delete this camera and create a new camera okay and for those of you who are wondering where it might have ended up it's since our uh, 3d cursor is right in the middle of our scene and, and therefore in the middle of our cube so is the camera so I kinda gotta drag it out here um, one handy thing to be able to navigate with the camera is shift tilde gives you kind of first-person gaming controls and so I can wiggle my mouse around and then I can use W to move forward, S to move back, A to move left, D to move right, Q to move down, and E to move up and that way I can kind of operate my camera as though I was a camera operator. When I found a good spot where I like it I'm going to tap or I'm going to click on the mouse and that's where my camera is positioned so this is our new spot okay next we're going to play with the depth of field on our camera a little bit so depth of field um, basically is photographer speak for how wide your slice of focus is so if I just go in here and I check this little depth of field box and I say okay I want my f-stop to be f2.8 well that's a pretty wide aperture which allows more light to scatter uh, which in turn makes things become a little bit fuzzy so if I zoom way in here you can see that the edges of things are starting to get a little fuzzy just a little bit um, and because of the way cameras work if I move in closer to our object here then things that I am not focused on get fuzzier you can see the background suddenly got pretty sharp because that's that's about how far away I'm focusing with my camera and the foreground got fuzzy and the fuzz is the the soft focus is even more pronounced than it was now we need to be able to control that to control where the camera is focusing unfortunately that's really really easy it's way easier in blender um, with a virtual camera than it is in real life with a real camera so what I'm going to do you, you might see this focus object field here what I'm going to do is just create an empty so shift a and click on empty and I'll just do plain axes and I might scale up the size of those axes just a little bit so we can kind of see it and I usually just give this empty a name like focus underscore camera then I can come back to my camera controls select my camera and I can select that object as my point of focus and now no matter where I move or what my f-stop becomes uh, my focus is always going to be right on this empty so I'm going to open my f-stop up to an unrealistic amount like 0.1 or something and you can see that our background got really blurry and even parts of our cube are blurry but I can control which parts I can uh, I can focus on just this corner here if I want and everything else kind of starts to blur away and I can of course animate the position of this um, empty so let's animate its location right here and then after a hundred frames we'll move it back to this end of the cube and animate its location there and you can see now that our focus moves back and that's a really good way to rack focus or to to change the focus of your camera while you're moving around um, so camera controls are really really powerful and and I can uh, I can animate this f-stop value the same way we animated the focal length by the way so 
um, if I need to start a shot, for instance, really close in on something, and I want a certain amount of blur, so I'm going to bring my camera up too far. Bring my camera way in here, and let's just put a UV sphere, a little tiny one, right in front of us there. So here's our little UV sphere just sitting right on the corner here. And we'll put our empty right in the middle of it. But we'll try to let the camera focus. There we go. We'll give it a nice sort of edge in focus there. Okay, so if I need to start Let's say I want a little bit more oh, I'm doing it backwards here. I'm going to reverse the position of these keyframes. Come on. There we go. So I'm reversing the position of the empty keyframes so that we'll start with this ball kind of roughly in focus. Location. Okay. And um, if I want more in focus than that, I need to change my aperture value because I'm so close to this ball, everything else is going to be really blurry. Look how quickly this um, edge of our cube gets really blurred out. So I'm going to start at 2.8. You can see we've still got some blur, especially in our background there, um, but it's not overwhelming. So I'm going to keyframe that at frame 1 and come all the way over to frame 100, at which point I'm going to move my camera back a little ways and my focus point of course has come to the front of the cube now but because I've moved back I have more things in focus um, and that's a rule with cameras the closer you focus the narrower your depth of field gets uh, there are three factors that affect your uh, depth of field in camera and they are your focal length so your zoom level the higher the number here with the focal length the narrower your slice of focus is. Your proximity to your subject, the closer you get, the narrower your focus gets as well. And of course your f-stop, the lower this number is, or in other words the larger the aperture hole in the lens, uh, the narrower your depth of field gets there as well. So if I want less in focus now that I'm zoomed out, I need to narrow my f-stop. Or sorry, I need to open my aperture, which means a, a lower f-stop number. So 0.4 looks pretty good. I'm going to keyframe that right there. And now, <laughs> I forgot to keyframe the position of my camera, which was awesome. So let's take it back here. G Z Z. Okay, so now if we hit play, and I did it again. I forgot to keyframe my camera. I keyframed the f-stop, that's right. I knew I'd keyframe something. G, Z, Z. And location. There we go. Okay, so we start off focused on the ball. We come back and we're focused on this corner now, but we have a lot more blur back here than we would have had if we had just left our f-stop value alone. So those are some tips for uh, animating and kind of getting a little more realistic effects with cameras uh, in Blender. You know, if you can start to master the depth of field and making sure your camera is focused on what you want it to be focused on, then your scenes, the visual quality of them goes up 
a tremendous amount. Uh, so that's our tip for the day. I hope you enjoyed it.